Hi, I'm Michelle Olivier, and you're listening to Hey, I Want Your Job, the podcast that looks at amazing jobs and what it takes to get them. Welcome to Hey, I Want Your Job. And for the first time in a while, I actually think I wouldn't mind having your job, Alex. Like, we've had a spate of guests where I'm like, nope, couldn't pay me enough. But this time, I actually think it would be kind of cool. So with that in mind, Alex Boylan, what is your job title? My job title is executive producer and TV host of the College Tour TV series. Okay. And so that already sounds sexy as hell. (laughs) <laughs> right because anytime you're in the television sector people are like "Ooh," but it's actually the part about being on the camera that i would be like oh no 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 okay <laughs> i would want to do the other part well and, you're doing such a great job right now i think you do well at it yeah on a youtube channel with like <laughs> you know that much scope like on tv very different so talk to me about the college tour like what is the show what do you do and how did this happen like absolutely so the college tour is a television series each episode tells a story of a different college campus all told through the lens of real students these are real real current students telling their authentic story um and we have done i think 65 episodes so far everything from small liberal arts schools to trade technical community colleges to the big state schools like university of connecticut university of illinois okay and I cannot imagine that as a small child, you thought around thinking, wow, when I grow up, I'm going to make a television show telling the story of colleges through the lens of the student. Like, that's not a thing that you dream as a small human. So how as a not small human did you wind up doing this thing? You know, it's a great question. And it's a long journey, right? You get exposed to different things. And for me, I I was, you know, I, I was in business school and as a market analyst. But interestingly enough, I grew up, my father was a pastor. So weirdly, I grew up listening to stories every single, you know, Sunday. And so I think there's a little parallel there of of just being passionate about telling uh, stories. Um, But then I, you know, I was on The Amazing Race at 23. I got cast on that show. I was very fortunate to win that show. And that opened my eyes. That was the first time I was like, wow, this is a really cool world. So while I was doing the amazing race, I, you know, I was watching these travel producers do their job. And I was like, whatever you're doing, I want a piece of that. That looks awesome. And that began the next 20 year piece of my journey to here at the college tour. Oh, wow. So you have done so many schools and so many of them that like have a little bit of a like personal thing to me. It's like you did Sam Houston. I know tons of people do that, but I went to Sam Houston, but obviously I'm an Austin girl and you did both U Texas and St. Ed's. That's My right. dad uh, was a valedictorian at St. Ed's when he no graduated. No way, that, that's a great school. I love the view of the city from up on that campus. That's a beautiful school. Heck yeah. And then my master's is from St. Ed's. So, you know, wow. I have extra affiliation there, but I do... I'm annoyed that you've been so close to my alma mater for my undergrad, and yet you have. What is your alma mater? Beloit College. Uh, well, you've been in Evansville. You've been like, like you've been like so close to we're Beloit. Gonna put that, we're going to put that on the list. Okay. All right. Yeah. So how do colleges get, like, how do you pick the colleges? Do you, yeah, do you, you know, supply, a, do college supply? How does that work? It's a, let's call it a collaborative process, even from the beginning stages of it, because You know, there's obviously there's thousands of amazing institutions across the country. Um, Our goal uh, at the College Tour is we want to tell the story of each and every one of them. So that's our big, big picture goal. That being said, there's only so much you can do at once. And so right now it's really, we have a partnership team and they start, they talk to a lot of different schools and it's really timing. It's a, it's a lot of work to make an episode of television. And I mean, this is a very, it's the coolest experience for the college or university, but it's a lot. It's about six months you know, two months of pre-production, our production team working with that university's team, coming up with the segments and casting. We treat this like any other show. And so we got to cast real students, find real stories. And then we got to go on location, film all those. And and then it goes into post-production for two months. And so obviously there's a lot that goes on in that process. So it's really just finding the right fit. From our end, we're really just want to make sure we're as diversified as possible. 
right? We want to make sure we're, we're hitting, of course, the big state schools, but those smaller schools that no one's ever heard of that are amazing out there. Um, yeah, and it's like, I mean, look at episode one, Fort Lewis College, amazing college in Durango, Colorado. It's just a, a fantastic. We, we, so that there's community college. There's, like I mentioned earlier, there's trade schools, there's tech schools. And so for us, we really just want to be diversified um, in that, in our approach. Um, yeah. And when you're selecting it, do you start by selecting the student or do you start by selecting the university? So do you say, hey, we're, we're, when we're, you did UNT, like we want to go to U University of North Texas. And then you're like, you put out a casting call for students to absolutely, apply. Yeah. This has to be, I mean, we're lockstep with the university from day one. So first it's like the decision, like the university is like, yeah, this is going to work from our end. Our team is like, this is going to work. We're going to make an episode here at University of North Texas, for example. Yes. And at that stage, that now we begin the six-month journey together to bring that real, authentic, awesome, exciting story to life for the viewers. So you have some big names on there, right? Tulane, like huge name schools. And yet, I did not see an Ivy or a pseudo Ivy. Right, so Stanford. I put Tulane in the pseudo Ivy, no. I. It's a good I question. Have, it is yeah, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not looking to throw down with Tulane <laughs> on this one. But in general, I think people think like Berkeley and Stanford when they think of yeah. like the you know, the yeah. the might as well be in Ivies, right? Um, is that a conscious choice that like those guys have so much press already? Screw them. Yeah, it... I would say, I mean, imagine, uh, once again, there's thousands of schools out there. So I, I would put it, you know, and there's lots of conversations with that team. So, you know, mm -hmm. for us, it's really, it lines up, the timing lines up, it's availability on there, and, and we can get to work. And so, um, yeah, I, I would just put, like, everyone's on our radar, everyone, right? There's no one off our radar. There's no one we're not interested in doing. We want, we literally want to tell the story of every single college campus. It's a, it's a timing thing with a lot of yeah. this, so. I'm head of talent for a company that works with career services at universities all across the country, and it's been really interesting for me to work with them and to learn things that, like, um, the, what I think of as prestige universities, right? That like, so this company already works with Yale and MIT and a bunch of those kind of like, holy crap names, right? And they're like, yeah, and that's great if we're only trying to attract other Yale and MIT type schools, but the UNTs, the smaller, the Beloit's, the smaller colleges, do not consider themselves to be in competition with or even really in the same realm as those organizations. So I think that that's, um, that's been a huge learning point for me is that kind of balance and how the colleges and universities see themselves. Is that part of what your team takes into account or are you really more focused on what the viewers are interested in, which would make sense more marketing? I mean, once again, I think from us, it's, I don't even know, it's more of, there's a lot, there's thousands of schools and we want to yeah, tell yeah. them all. So I don't, I don't want, it's not like a, this or that. We're not sitting here pitting schools against or like, Oh, that. Oh one's no. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really like, we want to hit them all. And so does the timing work with that school, whether it's, whether it's Ivy league or community college to us, each one of them has a story to tell. And each one of them is designed for maybe someone different. And so to it, whether it's tech trade, you know, it, so it's not, it's not a, it's not a, let's not put it like college choice choosing. It's more of like, we want to hit them all. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, but I would say Ivy League is very, very important, but it's a very small piece of the students that are going to be able to go to that, you know? And so there's, um, there's lots of schools out there. So as long as we're staying as diversified as possible, I think we're, you know, hitting the main masses um, for the viewers that are out there and, you know, the young people. So what makes the most compelling student story? So when you're, when, so you pick the university and now, now we're going to tell the individual student story. What, what do you guys look like, look for in that? Are you looking for a typical student? Are you looking for a, a innately atypical student? An amalgamation of those over the course of the season? Like what, what's the goal? Shell, it's a great question. And you know, what's interesting about this you never, sometimes you never know in the casting process. You know, casting is, a, it's a, it's a, it's an art form almost. Um, sometimes when we're building out the episode, we're working with the university. I'm just going to make some generic things here, but let's just say, we know we want to tell the story of sports. We know we want to tell the story of engineering. 
or our study abroad program. Let's just say we know that that's an important part of that institution and we wanna bring that story to life. Cool, that's gonna go on the board. That's really important for us. While we're kind of deciding, we think are gonna be our segments, they're gonna be the pillars to this episode. We're also casting. So sometimes that perfect student is like, oh my gosh, this student has a great story. I'm just making this up, but he's from this part of the world and he got enlightened, he really, I don't know, he's pulling motors apart, putting them back together, always loved engineering. He's got a great story. He's got the right charisma. He's got all the right pieces. We want to make that and it matches up. Other times in that we go super wide with casting. Okay, so it's not like if you don't fit into this bucket, you're not, we're not looking at you. We want to look at everybody. Happens all the time, Michelle. All of a sudden, it's like this was something we didn't, we weren't thinking about, but the student's story is so good. It's like, this is better. Like, let's tell, even though this might not have been about the business program that we thought we we're going to tell, it's about the arts program, but this person's story is so compelling. It's so great what, how that institution is helping this student kind of, you know, get on their path to life and have an extraordinary life that all of a sudden we'll choose it. So it's, it's a little bit of an art form in the casting process. It's wide. We just want, re the biggest thing I would say is authenticity. That is the key. The key to storytelling, to be honest. I mean, it's this key to, yeah. key to great choice. It's like, we, we're not, we, this isn't made up. I mean, all the way down to when that student, when that student's chosen to be in the episode and the first draft of their script, we ask the student to write it. And of course we have people that write, we have production coordinators and the, of course the college is gonna be involved, but of course we want it to be their real story. And so I think that's why the success that the college tour is having, it's because these are real students, right? And they have real journeys. And, uh, and of course, every single young person out there is going to have theirs too. So it's good when they can look up and be like, yeah, that's like me. <laughs> that might be a great fit for me at that college. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. And I completely feel what you're saying. I think that, you know, authenticity is so engaging and it's so enigmatic, right? That I think people these days are, are pretty sophisticated in terms of their bullshit sniffers. And so when you try to put together a story that is for marketing purposes, I think that people can tell and it doesn't work well, right? Like 100%. in my world of HR and recruitment, it's that, you know, I do a lot of diversity recruitment and a lot of work in the DEI space. And one of the first things I always say is that picture on your website of like the perfect rainbow of skin tones, you know, just take it off because everybody knows that's some bullshit stock imagery. Like, and even if it's not, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, Couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. So I think, so do you get involved in the casting process or do you have artists, as you put it, I love, by the way, that you said it's an art form. Like, do you have people that do that for you or are you, well, you know, you're executive team. producer? So like how many pots do you have your fingers in? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, obviously when you're building something, especially new, um, that journey of my actual job will change as the production grows, as the team grows, as the, as everything starts growing. So early on, uh, very hands-on with it, right? It'd be, it, very early on, it's like, imagine, you know, creating a television show at the beginning pieces, it's, you know, you might have an idea in your head, but it's, it takes a team to come together and you really start figuring out in the field. It, 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 actually, I should say, it's from the day one of you starting to work with the university. It's all new. It's, it's a brand new thing. And so you, you, you know, we have a lot of it. We have a very experienced team. And so, but those early days, myself, Lisa Hennessy, I mean, we were very hands-on with every single detail because we're building out the format and the, and all the processes that's going to allow this show to now have 65 episodes in an under, under two years. And so early on, very involved with casting, very involved even with the scripts. I used to write my own, as the host, I used to write my own hosting scripts. Um, so every little piece of this, the, let's say this production journey of six months, got to know every single piece there in order to build the house, right? And you got to build this thing. And so now my job and, and throughout this, it always is kind of evolving and changing. So to now, of course, you know, we have production coordinators and supervising producers and, you know, we have, you know, probably 60 people are touching this every single episode in a different 
stage, but that didn't start like that. There's kind of like this core group that was early on that was just really handholding every piece of it. Then figuring out, is it going to work? Is it going to be successful? All those things you don't know in the television world, you know, what's going to work and what's not. And then you just sure. start, you start fine tuning along the way. And yeah. So at this stage of the game, I am typically not brought into the casting process too much. Once in a while, I might be like, Hey, they, but it's, it's been a lot. It's been, it's been a while since I've been involved in that. And that's just be, that's kudos to our team. Our team does an amazing job and, and, um, and just the systems that are in place to make the episode. So at that note, what was the piece that you were most excited to hand off to somebody else that you think, Oh, thank fuck. We can now afford to pay somebody <laughs> to do that. What is, what was that piece for you? That is a real, that's another really good question. Cause early on, there was a lot of little details we were figuring yeah. out. Uh, I don't, I don't want every, the, the good, I have a weird background where I have touched every, you know, I've done a lot in production, meaning like from hosting to producing to directing other talent to like, so there was a lot of like pieces of my career that kind of led up to like what this production, how it's done. So weirdly for me personally, I'm learning more now because our team is so big and there's just a lot of moving parts. Um, I've always been kind of in the trenches, making the pizza for lack of a better term um, in, in, in production. So I was always, I was really like, even though I've, I've created a lot of, a lot of great projects and been proud of those projects, but I was always in the field making it, you know, like, and so this is a little, this is a little, this is really exciting. So um, there's not one piece, honestly, because everyone's, imagine there's four stages of our production process. First phase one is pre-production. That's where you're, it's very creative. It's where you're coming up with what are our segments and a lot of onboarding. Okay, cool. We're going to cast them. We're going to cast this student. Now we got to figure out what that script is going to be. We're going to lock it. Where are we going to film that student? So lots of planning is going to be done. That that's a a, a piece of your brain, and that that can be really fun because you're you're really creating a lot of what's going to happen. This is the building blocks of the show. I'm also a field guy. Like in my, if you look at my pack back career so being in the field i'm very comfortable in the field like I, i'm very comfortable like directing students or you know figuring things out on the fly seeing what's going to work and not going to work and so that's it that's another journey that's a different team that's out there that's like imagine pre-productions handing it over to the production team the field team they're going to go in there and they got to execute that that's what's been planned okay so now we got to go and get you know, these students have been media trained and all these things. Now we got to go execute that. And of course, imagine there's all kinds of variables that happen in the field. What you plan on never actually works out exactly that way in the field. Okay. We always say it's like you're, you're planning for war, it, hoping nothing happens, but you got to plan for every little, every little detail. So that way, when you're supposed to be shooting outside on Tuesday, but it's pouring rain or a hailstorm whips through or, a sm you know, fires in Colorado, wherever, whatever it is, we have a backup plan and we can go and we can adjust. So it's a different, that's a different kind of brain that works in that capacity. You know, you got to be flexible. You never know. You might be walking into a student. Imagine these aren't actors. These aren't professionals. Yeah. These are real students. You might be walking into that and thinking, oh, this is going to be really easy. This student like seems like rock solid. And all of a sudden lights, camera, action. <laughs> and that student's frozen, right? Yeah. Or, oh my gosh, we forgot the sprinklers are now on in the middle of the football field and we're supposed to shoot something. So there's all kinds of mini variables that can, that will happen in the field and so you got to be able it's very like quick on your feet thinking or like oh we're supposed to shoot this building we thought it was gonna be beautiful it, it doesn't even look like the lab we gotta make it look like a lab right now because everything got put away there's stuff that happens all throughout that week so that's a different brain when you're there and you just got to be flexible okay. think on the fly very creative and at the same time calm cool and collected because that when you're producing that and that there's, there's, of course, a team, you're, you're the producer who's in the field is driving that, you know, and you're going to, you got to make certain calls and stand behind those calls. And at the end of the day, come back with an episode of television, right? So that's it. And then all of a sudden you're going to pass it over to post. And I'd say that's, that's probably the, you know, that's a, that's a team. That's a whole different, you know, department that's now going to take everything that's filmed, put all that stuff together. That takes two months Right. And so I've never, I've never been an editor. I've never sat behind an editing bay. So that's always, you know, you're just, you're waiting for that, you know, cut to come through and then you're 
hoping everyone's seeing the same movie in their head. And, and once again, I'm saying all this at the because of the beginning stages. Now we everyone knows what they're going to do. It's everyone is on the same page from our production team and the university lockstep through this whole process. But in the building blocks of that, that's where a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of thought has to go into to build that production system so it can run as smoothly as possible. So I hear all the firefighting and like all of the energy and all of that, and it sounds invigorating but also frankly exhausting <laughs> and Which part? <laughs> all of it I, I think i'm i'm definitely taking back the i totally want to work with you on the college tour um opening comment well, remember i'm kind of walking <laughs> you through remember there's six there's a big team now that all i play. know yeah, i still so. even a 60 person team i'm thinking no i would want twice that before i sign up but my question was actually going to be i know for me in hr and recruitment like people have an assumption about that. And there's a certain amount of being on, right? Like I have to remember not to tell people that I hate their face or to admit to being misanthropic when I'm in an HR meeting, because that's apparently a bad look for the HR chick, who knew? Um, and so there is definitely this, like when people meet me in real life and they're like, oh, you're in HR, great. I had the following three questions about my current employer. And then they're also surprised that I'm having a beer and giving them the middle finger as I walk away, right? And that's in my world. Your world is much more about being on and being sort of, you know, in that side, in, in the light and on camera, et cetera. What is it like for you to turn off and to be oh, just Alex at home? And yeah, uh, and, and by the way, it's you're right. I mean, be, you whether you're the whether you're in pre-production or production, you're producing it, or and it's a different brain for me when I'm on camera too, because that's a different kind of what you got to do there and kind of deliver. Um, for me, on um, I'm really I think I mean the good thing is I love people, so that's a very good. I'm in the right zone. That's half of life, yeah. right? It's figuring to be in the right zone where you're supposed to be. So I like people. That's probably the most challenging part of producing is that there's a lot of different personalities, and you got to get everyone. You know what I mean? No one's you know. So that's but I I genuinely I'm like a chameleon and I like people, so I can kind of it's not really hard for me to navigate that piece of it. But it I am on a lot. I am on a lot. So I would say for me, when I come back, I live in Venice Beach, California. You can catch me on my surfboard. You know what I mean? You can catch me on the beach. And that that's my, that's, I just, I shut it all down, you know? And so I just kind of get it away from it. I'll put my phone away. And, you know, so that's, I'm a, I'm a beach bum at heart. <laughs> and so that, that is, that is for me, getting out on my surfboard and getting away from it all is probably how I cope with it all. For me, people are always most surprised to hear that I'm an introvert. They're like, but you're so friendly. I'm like, just because I'm not a dick doesn't mean that I like people. Like, <laughs> I'm so hide you, exhausting. What's the thing for you <laughs> <So funny. laughs> that when people like meet real Alex, the beach bum Alex, that they're like, oh, I was so surprised. I thought. Okay, this is going to sound like weird and you can fact check this with any friend or anyone. The same person you meet me working is the same person not work. I'm always working to be honest like it's never the work never goes away you're either dealing with something or you're thinking about no that. surprises you're just everybody what people think so the people I, who I bet you'd be surprised I bet if you ask people like what I don't there's not like a Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde with me I'm pretty much I'm me like I I, I am I take exception. I'm not Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I well, I'm not saying you, Michelle. No, I'm just trying to answer the question. I'm not saying, I, I'm not saying that. I, get, I I would say, yeah, I probably make a good question for my wife because she probably gets the brunt of it all where it's like sometimes I'm coming home, I'm exhausted and I don't want to interact with people or it's just like I want to get with a buddy and watch a game and that's it. Or like, you know, th th and then but there are other people in your life that you have to give time to and that you care about and you love. So that's that's probably the best that I could say. But I'm not a, I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty- You just I'm, always I'm, had it on brand. Yep. I, yeah, I'm pretty I on brand. Really, yeah. I have to say that. Like this is, you're, you're getting me. I'm pretty much like this. I'm pretty, I, I'm, like, I'm lucky. I love my life. I like, I'm stoked on life. I feel like it's blessed to be on this planet earth and breathing every day. I've enjoyed it. And so I'm trying to, sat, as long as I'm, you know, keep going around the sun, I'm trying to enjoy the journey. That is a fantastic and refreshing attitude. So that's amazing. So all of this, so did all of this, 
television experience start with The Amazing Race or were you already in that world? So before Rewind yeah. to pre-Amazing Race, what did you do in that universe and and what was yeah. that? Yeah, great question. So I went to school for international business and I chose okay. that major because I-, I International enjoyed... law, so I feel Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, you know, I enjoyed traveling. So like I, I always, I was fortunate to travel a lot as a kid internationally and in, you know, high school, I moved to Brazil and college. I lived in Germany after college. I lived in the Caribbean so I, and my parents, because of some of the mission work they did, I'd, I'd travel a lot overseas too. So I, I had a very good, like well-rounded upbringing in that capacity, but for whatever reason I chose business, I have no idea why. And then I had a really cool mentor, a buddy's father, who got me a really great internship. And then I ended up working for him afterwards. And I think because I had no money growing up, I chased it a little bit. Yeah. And I just thought like, oh, business. And I, and I, because I got these opportunities through my father's good friend, I was like, oh man, he looks like he makes a lot of money. That sounds good. I like his life. Right. And so that's kind of how I just ended up on that path and, you know, got an opportunity. You know, I think that's like life is just exploring, trying new things. And I, you know, so I was my, I was a little bit in, like kind of helping sales when I was in this intern in Germany. And then when I was in Boston, I was a market analyst for the sales team. So I think naturally, and it, this has happened my whole life, I've naturally always been in sales. I've always been selling something. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was it. And then, you know, remember when Survivor came out, do you remember that? I do. Yes. Okay. So when that season came out that summer, that's the first time I ever watched television. I mean, I was like hooked on Survivor every single, whatever week it was on, whatever day. I loved every second. Wow. I was like, this is awesome. Um, I love that world. So I was just, so re when reality TV hit, I was, I was like, my antennas went up and I was watching. And then when Amazing Ray, I just, I was, I, I'd quit my corporate job. I'd moved to the Caribbean on a whim because I just, the corporate world was not for me. And now I'm coming back from the Caribbean to go to my really good buddy that I grew up with in Boston's graduation at Clemson. And I came back and him and I just drove back to Boston. I'm still trying to, you know, I'm, I'm young. I'm like 22, 23, you know, had a lot of life experiences, but definitely didn't know my path. And so during that time, I mean, I'm literally I'm blessed. A pop-up showed up. It's like race around the world on Amazing Race. I didn't know what I mean, the Amazing Race wasn't out yet. All yeah. you had to compare is like real world, road rules, and survivor. And so, so but it was just to give you context, you're probably a year older than me. So trust me, you I know, know exactly. I, yes, yeah, we are yeah, of the same. Yes, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. Ama so amazing race, like race around the world. I perked up because I travel, I love travel, love to travel. And at this stage, I you know, I backpacked across Europe. I've lived in South America. I've lived in Europe. I've lived in the Caribbean. Like I've done a lot. And so I was like, oh, this is, and we end up, you know, very fortunate. We old school VHS camcorder put a, put a uh, casting video together and we're cast on the show. And so that's where, that's the journey to get to, you know, get on, get on the amazing race. And there it doesn't turn it. I want to win, but it's more importantly, I'm watching. Like I, I was the first time I ever saw what a field producer does. I didn't even know they existed. And I think at that time, I don't even know if they did really exist. That was like, that was the beginning of a whole new genre. And I was just like, oh, I got to work in this space. This looks fun. So you went from that to like straight into television, right? Like after that, you're, you're in doing all kinds of things from yeah. a television perspective. And that's a whole different universe, right? So like, there's this kismet that, I mean, how does that work? Like okay. you, you win a reality TV show and then they show up and they're like, Hey, Alex, I like the cut of your jib. Let's hand you this fabulous career that people would love to have. Yeah, and, and that is, that is, a, that is, it, I could easily see how that would look on the outside. That's not uh -huh. the journey. I mean, I, I, there are so many bumps, bruises, ups, downs. I mean, this is a really tough business. Um, but I think I, I think I'm the right personality for this business. Cause I truly loved it. So I was in it no matter what. And so, so imagine, I mean, I'm, I'm going to figure this out, whether I, it wasn't about like, Oh, am I going to make money? Am I going to be host shows? Am I going to be, it was none of that. I was just like, I love this world so much. And so I think I had the right attitude coming in doing that. Um, and so I, I, my first job, I got a job in LA, came out to LA that's, you know, and then I got a job in casting. My first job was casting a show. And, uh, and then I got a really cool phone call. 
And so I'm still, I'm in LA trying to navigate, just grab job, just survival jobs. Like give me a job in the world just so I have a job. And then two places called me their hometown kid, Boston, where I grew up. And then Jacksonville, Florida, where I went to college at Jacksonville University. There happened to be a production company that is not a production hub whatsoever for television and film. <laughs> and, but there happened to be a production company there called Pine Ridge Film and Television, ran by a, a gentleman by the name of Jerry Smith, one of my mentors to this day. And they did a, all these travel shows. And he just loved Jacksonville, Florida. And that's why he built this like boutique production company out of Jacksonville, multi award winning. Like they're awesome, but it was just a very rare to have this. And anyway, I get a call from them because I'd gotten notoriety from the from from the amazing race and they were like hey we have a show idea would love you to host it well that i i would jumped all over it that show never went never went but i was so looking for a home like i was looking for a place to like learn i was i'm young i'm i'm 24 years old and they gave me an opportunity to do sales inside their company selling this stock footage and i was just like i, I would have swept the floors and i was willing to do anything and so I ended up getting a job inside that production house, worked really hard at that job. And Jerry would work with me a little bit on the side, like, you know, half, you know, kind of like, I don't want kind of like training me as a host, like giving me like bringing me into the studio, trying different things out. And then they end up selling the show. But a year later, they sold the show and they were like, Alex, you take it. So, and then from there, it's just a lot, it's a long journey from there to here and happy to talk about any piece in between all that, but it, you know, it's, I got in, I got in a really good home, Like right? This production company cared about its employees and got, had their back and there was a room for growth. And so I went from hosting shows to like, I started like producing the shows and just, I was, I was young with a lot of energy and a lot of excitement for the business, truly loved what I did. So I didn't feel like I was working and was always willing to do whatever it took to, you know, keep, keep learning really. And that, you know, just that led to the next chapter of my life and created some really cool projects and you know it's just been a it's been an awesome journey but it from the outside it's always easy in the entertainment world because you see the successes everyone sees the successes they don't see the failures i mean uh i mean it's like one percent of everything i've created went anywhere those projects are awesome right and they're great but the, you gotta remember there's a lot on the backside. there's plenty of tough times tough financially there's there's a lot of like tough times in this business and that's just the path i ended up choosing because i was very much like an entrepreneur in this business like 99 percent of the things that i've done i sold those right and so i created them and i sold them and that's different than a lot of us some people are work at the studio some other people work for production companies some other there's so many different worlds and there just happened to be the path that i was that I, after, and I mean, after Pine Ridge, after I learned a lot, I'd have this idea to go around the world for free. And that sparked the next, like, kind of like 10, 12 years of my path, um, you know, coming up with concepts and trying to get people behind them to make enough money to pay the rent. So what was it that happened a few years ago that made you suddenly come up with the idea of all of the ideas you had had, of all of the things that you had sold along the way, where did the college tour come from? It's great. Um, because it's got to have a lot of passion, I would think. For it totally. To it, yeah, lots. Of, a, I feel like I've been building my whole career towards this project, to, to the show. There's a lot of little tiny pieces that kind of connect together that I think help begin the, the process of this journey. And once again, there's, there's, we have amazing partners like Lisa Hennessy is, I mean, she, she ran, she helped like launch Survivor and she's run big franchises. So Mike Murray is on, she was a big DP and he runs a big studio. That's part of this as well. Burton Roberts and I ran around the world production. So this college tour is just not me, but it is my brainchild. So there's lots of people that are helping make this what it is. Let's say, call it a success. Um, but so, but I would say in the, my brain of where, so I'll go into just the easy part of it. My niece couldn't, my niece give, is given one trip to go take a look at college campuses, right? And, and she lives in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. So her, her mom, my sister and her come down to LA and I'm, I'm taking them around to different schools and it's awesome. I love it. I'm loving every part of this. It's like so fun. And then while she's here, she's like, young Alex, I want to go check out some schools in Texas. I'm going to go to some schools in New York. And her, her mom, my sister's like, what do you think we're made of money? This is it. You know, like this is your Pick trip. want to be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, this is it. Like we just don't have, we, we do not have the funds to go anywhere else. 
And now, I, I, what I what I know now, I mean, the average family trip to take to go to take a look at a college outside of there is twenty five hundred dollars. So it's a very small, tiny piece of the population that have the funds to go travel around to go take a look at every school they want. So while after that, um, so now I'm helping Isabel. She's back in Chippewa Falls, and I'm helping her navigate it online. I'm like, oh, well, let's take a look at this school. And if you, every school has an amazing story to tell, but there's thousands of them. And when you dive into it everyone tells their story in a little different way. And, and it can be very overwhelming for someone who went through this process. I personally went through this with my niece. It's painful. It's overwhelming. There's a lot. It's very, very challenging. And so yeah. that's where the light bulb went off being like, there has to be a better way to tell, you know, the uh, young people, their parents or someone else, maybe who's like transitioning in their career or whatever it is, there, there has to be a better way to learn about the incredible institutions that we have across this country. And the best way to do that is have, you know, have an episode. So whether you're watching it on Amazon Prime or on Fox's Tubi or at thecollegetour.com or on our app or streaming channel, I mean, this airs on 18 different places, all for free. How powerful is that? you know, to young people and to their parents to uh, a, alleviate the pain of the financial, you know, pain that of, of traveling around, but to just learn and be inspired. And as we have gone farther into this, you know, 15% of high school students don't even graduate high school. Only 30, 40, you know, 40% are just not going on and getting, you know, whether that's community college, trade school, tech school, four years, you know, going on higher, getting higher education. And every step of that piece is going to help them have a better life. And so now when we zoom out, we feel like a, a big responsibility with the show. We're, we're helping change the face of education in America just by helping inspire them. Like here, if you know what you want, if you're a young person and now you have an idea, if you're 16 years old and now you're watching a 19 year old and you're learning about forensics or law or anything else, how cool is it? It's like, I want that. Now you can start like looking at your high school a whole different way. Like, what do I need to go do to get that? right? What made, what kind of university do I need to go to? What kind of major do I need to major in? And now they have a path. Now they have a purpose for it. I think it's really, but I think the college tour is the first time this is ever happening. We're getting peers and peers to talk to each other. And prior to this, it's usually an adult or maybe it's a book or a magazine or a website, really tough. But how powerful is it when a young person's like, that is what gets me excited. And now I just need to figure out the path to go get that. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. So I have to ask, where did this bell go? Oh my gosh, so good, because sometimes I forget to answer that, and so this story comes full circle. In episode three, okay, Arizona State University. In that, no correlation whatsoever here, this girl's casting, we were going to do the story on this very cool Starbucks program that they have. And allowed this girl, uh, this 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 girl who tells the story in the episode of how they have this partnership and helped her fund for school. Isabel, my niece, is watching the episode, and she's like, I work at Starbucks, looks into Starbucks. Now she has a full ride to ASU through the Starbucks program. Yeah. So it's like the proofs in the pudding that this, like, it's entertaining to watch. But at the end of the day, there's a real result to helping young people figure out their path, figure out where to go to school. That had to be, like, such a magical moment. Oh. Like, it had to just be, like. It's insane. It's insane. It's like, you can't write this story. I mean, it's all, yeah. like, it's amazing. I hope that you won like brother of the year from your sister for that because college is not cheap. I'm going to remind Andrea about that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Be like, uh, I just want to remind you how much money I have <laughs> saved you. You're still welcome. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> My brother would never hear the end of it if I managed to achieve something like that. Oh, for for sure. yeah. I'm, That's incredible and of course like i just again i love like the the kismet that is like your own niece that started this then wound up benefiting from it what for you has been the story that you've told that kind of touched you the most that you were that really kind of like i understand that all of them are special and that all of them were beautiful in their own way but you know if if i made you pick one <laughs> that was the that really like spoke to you at some different level what which one would you say Oh, I mean, it, I'm going to answer this, but this is the hardest question to answer. I mean, imagine we have, we have featured over, I believe, 800, 900 students across America. So how do you pick? And they're just, they're so, every one of these stories, I mean, they're all awesome because it's their own story. The fact that a young person is actually willing to open up and have that story in front of millions of people to watch is already incredible. So they're all rock stars. 
Um, so I don't, it's hard, but I'm going to pick a story just so you have one. Okay. They're, they're all awesome. Okay. <laughs> We're at University of Illinois. It, this is Lisa Hennessy, who's an executive, one of the creators, executive producers of the show. So very special. All episodes are special, but it's really cool when one of us went there. So Lisa went there and there is this student, Mahir, and he's from India. And he tells, and, and this is one of those stories that I was mentioning that he, this wasn't, we weren't originally going to tell the story of engineering. It was because he just gave the, his video of telling his story it was so compelling. They're like, we got to tell the story. It's awesome. So he grew up, I can't remember what city in, in India, but grew up and he just loved tinkering with things. And he talks about going to like the dump and grabbing things and putting things together. And, you know what I mean? So engineering was like in his blood from being a little kid. And while it's very challenging for international students to figure out where, if they can get to America, like it's like a whole, if you think it's hard for us, it's 10 times harder for an international student. So he gets, he sees a professor at the University of Illinois and it sparks his interest because of what COVID's happening at this point in time. And he had created some new thing that could, you know, swipe COVID away it was, uh, with a magic wand or something. It was something that could like disinfect a room. It was like this really cool like engineering product project. And then there was this professor that he connects with from India. And that's why he chose the university. And now he came here and this kid's like killing it. He's going to change the world in engineering. And that's just like one story of like what, Here's this person who came from a world that's very far away, very challenging to America, you know, persevered that is an amazing institution. The University of Illinois is incredible in Champaign, Illinois, connects with this professor. And now what that university is doing to help this student's journey to, you know, foster him to become like, you know, who knows what he will create next, but it will be amazing because that's who he is. So he's a really, you know, but here. I can't remember exactly what episode number it is, but University of Illinois, that sticks out. I, I you know, I was, and also it was kind of funny because he, he was so funny. He was so funny. Like I was directing him uh, this actual segment and he would like, he somehow had a command of the whole crew. Like, I think he kicked me out of my own production room at one point in time. He's like, Alex, I can't have you around. No, get back over here. Give me some advice. Like he was just, he had this nature to him. It was just a, a special student. And uh, wherever you are, I'm here. We miss you, bud. Hope all's well. <laughs> so that is uh, season one, episode five, um, for what that's worth. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, that is beautiful. Not all stories are beautiful to everybody for the same reasons. Um, so it's Pride Month at the moment, and you can't have Pride Month without having the people who say things like, I, when you know when straight pride month and etc it's impossible to celebrate anything without somebody complaining about the thing that you're celebrating have you featured any student stories that you got either unexpected or a lot of like oh my god i can't believe you would celebrate this from anybody no never okay. and, and one of the biggest things i would say in you know diversity and inclusivity is so important um, just in life, but in this show, and if you watch, you watch episodes, inclusivity and diversity is probably really, like, those are very popular. We do a lot of segments on that at a lot of universities. Um, I would say that's like almost probably number two to like locations, probably the one that everyone does, like talking about the location. Uh, yeah. So it's su super important. And so, you know, we always, you know, we're, I think what's really fun about this, it's because it's, so A, never. Never have we got no, I've never gotten no, nothing. I've never heard anything of anyone being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And we, I always say it's like, what's, what's really fun about this is that we are, we're here to tell that authentic story. And there are there's so many different cultures and people. And that's what makes this country great. It's what makes this planet great. And so I hope that this, you know, watching this show is like, it's like a love letter to higher education and an awesome exploration of America because we're going to have schools like Asbury that are small Christian schools in Kentucky. And that's different. That's a different place to go. It's a different culture there than, you know, co um, Columbia College, Chicago, which is like very liberal and open and different. Okay. And I, and I don't want to say either one of them is like super liberal or conservative. Yeah. I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just saying they're different. And they're I think that's, what's amazing about college tour. And we're okay. And we're, we're here 
we're, we're, we always say to the college students, I like the college student walks in and is like, oh, this is your story. No, we're working with the university. What is your authentic story? And how do we pull that out, bring that to life, tell that to the audience so the young people can find the best place that's for their vibe? Or where they, where's their tribe? What's the best location for them? And that they, so they can find it. So I think that's like, I hope that answers the kind of question. No, that it is, yeah. We've and never, it's like, I've never... You know, we, we, and we don't hold back on anything. You know, we're just telling real stories of real people. This is what it is. And I think everyone, you know, I think what's really fun, even in the higher education we look at, everyone celebrates each other. It's really fun to see different schools now that we've done so many, like, oh, I just watched this new episode. That was really cool. And so it's been so supportive across the board, whether, whatever, wherever you land, culturally, politically, university-wise, whatever, everyone's just like, it's it's cool that, you know, we're just telling authentic, real st student stories out there. I think that's incredible. So I have to ask, you said that it's extra great when a member of staff. What's you know, that? You said that it's extra great when a member of staff has been to the university. It's extra and what? I'm missing that word. Great. It's extra great. When some, when you're on site and somebody actually attended. Um, oh, yeah. So... Yeah. Why haven't you done your alma mater? We have. You did? I Jackson missed that on the list. It. Oh, it's not out yet. That's mine. It's not out yet. It's coming. Season five. Oh. Last episode of season five. Is there a university that you think has such a unique story for one reason or another that you would particularly like that's on like your bucket list to tell that story? Not really, because to me, it's... We have a partnership team that's working all the time and let's stay sure, diverse sure. and let's go across it. To me, it's a little different. It's more of, because I'm very fortunate position where I go to every episode. Yeah. I'm, I'm, probably, I'm the only person in the whole production that goes to every episode because I have to be there to do my job. Okay, right. so I, and that is really, and that's really fun. So to me, it's, it's a, I'd look at it a little differently. It's more of, for instance, like I, I went up da UC Davis, right? In Davis, California, right outside of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. not far from where I live and uh I knew nothing about you know nothing you know I, I just the school was on my radar and all of a sudden you get to the location and you learn a lot of course in pre-production and you're like this place well, I would have gone this place is unbelievable there's this arboretum that goes right through the campus the town of Davis California it's like I don't know six blocks by six blocks super cool like bars restaurants right outside this you know and the school's got great there's you know it's an ag school i mean it's not that it's a uc school it's got everything but great it has a great ag program great veterinarian program one of the best in the country great wine program so it's like you know you'll be walking to class and all of a sudden there's a barn of horses and it's, it, it is as and so that's it's those surprises and honestly that happens at every university it doesn't matter if it's a community college or a tech school, Florida Tech. It doesn't matter. All the there's there's not one episode. And I think that's the testament to the success of the series and just the, the team of mind. There's not one school here. I'm going to be like, I didn't know that. That's awesome. And so, <laughs> but but UC Davis, that that's one. I mean, I could go around the country and tell you great stories. Another one, Delaware Valley University, season one. Small. That really is an ag school. Um, that is in Doylestown, uh, right outside this quaint town called Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And it is like you, we, the whole crew is staying in Del uh, Doylestown. We're like, how have I never heard about this? This is like as Americana, cute, quaint. And so, um, but it's also hard to like compare because imagine it's different going to University of Rhode Island, which is on this like you know awesome seaside, cool town to Tempe at ASU, which got, it's in the desert. That's totally different to Durango, Colorado, to Florida, you know? And I think that's another big thing of this journey that we're on telling these stories. It's all different. In fact, that's why we came out with, you know, now we just launched this a week ago, the college tour class. It's absolutely for free on our, on our website. Anyone can take it. And it's helping because it can be so overwhelming right? Trying to figure out how to do school. And there's so many schools and so much. And so it's fun. We, we said, you know what? There's so many data points out there. Let's break this down to four things. And location's one of them. Let's think about that. Do you want a four season school? That's pretty awesome. You get winter. Do you want a mountain town because you love snowboarding? You know, you're like, forget it. I want warm weather. Put me down in like Florida or Texas, or I want to be like just outside a big city, you know, like a you know, Texas Christian University. I'm not in Dallas. I'm right outside it. So I get the advantages of going, you know, and so it's- Close enough to Dallas. But close like. enough. Right, yeah, or Fort Worth. I know it's Fort Worth. But it's like, my point is that there's so yeah, many yeah, yeah. ways. So it's like we break no, it down. I think, yeah. 
we break it down by location, the type of campus, the campus culture, and then the final piece is major. And so trying to get, and it's all video based. So it's just like, here's a lesson, watch a bunch of videos from our show, and then try to decide and just get young people thinking of how to think about how to go to school. That is very cool and so exciting. And I wish I had had something like that when I was doing, I was a snob and I was like, I'm going to go to Harvard because it's fucking Harvard. And, <laughs> and then I didn't go to Harvard, obviously, but like, that was very much like, I remember when I was graduating, I only applied to Harvard, Georgetown, Northwestern and Beloit. That was it. And there, there's no school that is not on the top 20 schools on your list. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> They're like, that is a shit plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. They pulled it off. But yeah, I feel a need for no. I, this is my backup. <laughs> Northwestern is my fallback. It's gonna be great. Yeah, that's funny. The ego of an uh, eighteen-year-old me is is still like just almost <laughs> beggar's belief to forty-something-year-old me. Uh, that's like, awesome. That bitch. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so. Um, we are almost out of time, but I have a question that I ask everybody, and I am excited to ask you in particular. I ask all of my guests, how do you respond when somebody asks you how much you make? It's a great question. And here's the problem with answering that question in the world of entertainment, right? Because a, like, I never make the same amount of money ever, never has happened in my career. Some years you, you're, it's like feast or some people feast all the time in this business. I think it's better for me to answer that because honestly, how much I make, it's like, it changes. Like I make like, it, it's not like, a, here's your salary and this is what happens, you know? I mean, we're running a, a TV series that's scaling, it's a business. And so it's, you know, when you're in the entrepreneurial world, which is what, which is very, which is what I basically am. It's never, this. it's not the same from week to week to month to month to year to year. So that's all, that's, it's good for people to know that. And I'm, that's not, and I, so for me, some years, I make, some years I make nothing, nothing. And that might last, yeah. sometimes you may make it, you know, a few hundred, you know, you might, you make like hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? It's like, you just don't know. It's like, it's all based on like, you know, what's happening in that stage. And so that's the, the entertainment business is, is a, it's a very, it's a good thing for people to know because it's, it's, it can be tough if you're independent. Now there are more corporate jobs. If you were going to go, I'm going to work at the network, you know, I'm going to go work at a studio and I'm going to get like a full-time salary and it's a full-time job. But in the world I am, it's what have you created? <laughs> What's the profit on that? You know, or, you know, from, you know, so it's, it's a little different. It's a little different when you're creating your own projects. It's a lot more challenging to answer that question. All right. That was the best non-answer I think I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reality I, is I just don't know. I mean, literally, it's like, you know, that's my wife. One year, she's like, you're awesome. Next year, she's like, no, you're not doing so good. <laughs> so, we'd like to eat, Alex. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah right. um, So I can't believe but it, we are out of time. What have I not asked you that I should have done? Uh, I think we've covered a lot of ground. I think it is. it's been fan This has been awesome talking. No, I think this is great. I think everyone out there, if you could, if you're, if you're, if you've got young people, and you're trying to get into this, collegetour.com has all the information. I mean, that's really it. It's go to the college tour and you can learn where it is, watch it on our website, take classes, scroll around to colleges and have some fun. And I think that um, it sounds amazing and I'm super excited. We'll have all of the links to that. I think I'm just going to go to the the school and see where I should should go. Like I'm excited to go like take the challenge and see if it thinks I should have gone to Beloit or if like suddenly I should go somewhere else. Um, and then I will definitely not tell Beloit or my husband that I'm like, <laughs> well, I need another one. It's not okay. going to tell you where to go to school, but it'll, it will get your mind thinking of like, oh, you know, I never thought about that. I mean, imagine there's hundreds of majors out there, you know? And so it's there's just more it, than that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there other thousands? I mean, I don't know. So, so a lot of schools have a make your own major. So, um, oh, we haven't yeah. done that yet. Oh my gosh. I have to give you a little shout out, Michelle, when we do our first one. That's really cool. I never even, uh, and there's St. John's College, which has no major. That they're the great book, bo uh, the great books colleges. And so you go and you learn through their curriculum, but there is no major at St. John's. Oh, wow. It's good. It's kind of like liberal arts. Sort I mean, of. liberal arts a major. I guess you still choose a major out of liberal arts. School. Well, you Texas, they have plan two, which is the liberal arts uh, degree. Um, but liberal arts in general just refers to a balance of the the different areas of study. So mm -hmm. it it depends on, you know, 
having gone to a small liberal arts school, I can wax lyrical about the different iterations of liberal arts. Um, okay, but yeah. St. John's uh, is definitely liberal arts school, but um, schools, there's more than one of them. Um, and they, but their entire curriculum is a series of books that you read and then you get a diploma. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's what's, once again, not trying to just promote ourselves here, but like that's what's cool about the college tour. I never even knew oh, that. Yeah. And so it's just yeah. like for us, it's like we're on this mission. We're going to tell the story of each one of them. So find the right place for you. A, try to go on to higher education. And that, does, that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people, you know, trade school, community colleges, four-year schools, whatever it is. It's like go on because that is going to help you on your path to life. I, that is amazing. And I, I think it's so cool. So thank you so much for coming and sharing your journey and the college tour journey. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. You've been listening to, Hey, I want your job. For more information on how you can get your own awesome job, visit ONH Consulting at www.onhconsulting.com. We offer incredible resumes, no-nonsense career advice, and real-world tips for landing a job in today's market. Check us out on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Insta for more insider information. Soon, you'll be hearing us say, I'm Michelle Olivier, and hey, I want your job.